What is up, beautiful people? Corwin L. Gilliams here. Hope you guys are feeling blessed. Hope you guys are grateful to be alive. Some people didn't wake up this morning. We did, and that's enough reason for us to find even the smallest opportunity to be grateful. Coming at you with another video. Uh, if you have not checked out my last audio recording, you can do so. Um, you can do so on my website at clglifestyle.com, or you can do so on my Facebook page at uh, facebook.com forward slash CLG lifestyle. You can also um, follow me on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll also leave that information in the description box. Um, and you can follow and like and subscribe accordingly. With that being said, beautiful people, as I said before, as I always open up my videos to say, Hope you guys are feeling blessed. Hope you guys are grateful to be alive. Some people didn't wake up this morning. We did, and that's enough reason for us to find even the smallest opportunity to be grateful. Today, you know, my message, you know, I just wanted to come on here and encourage you guys um, about, you know, just a couple things. First things first is this. Um, understand that when you become, you know, when you have become a born again believer, right, and you've began to follow the spirit of god and you know for those of us who have finally finally received that you know it is impossible to please god without faith right and this faith is supposed to be applied to um believing in in jesus christ as lord and savior as the author and finisher uh, finisher of our faith as the guardian of our souls as the one whom the spirit of god has placed all things in in his control um and to steward you know for the glory of god right and so there's nothing that we can do outside of faith in Jesus Christ as followers of Christ. There's nothing that we can do in our own, you know what I'm saying, own ability, right? Or in our own um, natural ability, I should say, to uh, please God or to fulfill God's will, right? Everything that will come as far as in Christ will be done by the transforming power of the Holy Spirit and by the direction of and, and leadership of the Spirit of God in Christ Jesus. There is nothing else that, you know, we can do, you know what I'm saying, um, that will have us achieve the standard of living and the expectation of living that the Spirit of God has predestined for us to, um, to live or uh, created for us to live, right? And so, um, and so, I think about Ephesians 2.10, right? Ephesians 2.10 says that, let me just pull this up real quick. Ephesians 2.10 talks about, you know, our new identity in Christ, right? So before we became um, believers, right, we were, as the word was said, you know, just lost, right? Living a life of nothingness, having no identity, you know what I'm saying? Having really, you know, having really nothing um, in our lives that reflected, reflected anything of God. I mean, outside of, you know, God's grace and his mercy and his loving kindness and the things that he does willingly for all creation, right? The word talks about God reigns on the just and the unjust. So even in our life of rebellion, you know, the spirit of God protected us and, and, and pr provided for us and helped us in ways where we didn't even realize or know, right, that it was the spirit of God um, working in our lives. And so for me, you know, that's important to also um, to also recognize and affirm and highlight that, you know, if, you know, we couldn't even help ourselves, you know, period, right? Which was revealed when um, we became born again believers, right? You know, the Spirit of God has revealed to us, like, listen, we didn't even know that we needed saving. We didn't even know that we needed a savior. We didn't even know that we were on the verge of eternal damnation had it not been for the grace of God. So, you know, so, you know, all these things happen, you know what I'm saying? Um, as far as, you know, the, the Holy Spirit and the transforming of the mind, you know, these experiences with God begins to open up our hearts and minds to really understanding how beautiful and amazing the Spirit of God is. And that hadn't, again, not been for the grace and the mercy and the love of God, you know, where would we be? You know, who would we be? You know, what would have been our, um, how would our, our life would have turned out, you know? Um, and I mean that those questions are quite easily answered according to the word. Um, and, and so now that we know better, right now that we have 
the opportunity to not only know better but to do better as we acquire knowledge as our you know as we are, are transformed by the renewing of our minds as we are moving forward right with of the plans of god for our lives according to jeremiah 29 11 you know we continuously begin to see the hand of god in creation you know in a in a world where many of us was like yo this world is so evil this world is so wicked you know we begin to see how wait this world is not all wicked right because for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever will believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and so i'm led to believe that anything god has entered into has become glorified so even though this fallen world or this world had become fallen because of god's son you know he has restored or redeemed this world from a curse or the curse yet still this redeemed world or this good life that is made available to us in this world is only accessed through him or in him right i want to make that very clear here um and so you'll have two people living in the same house right in the same neighborhood same house right and these two individuals could will, will have two different earthly experiences or two different worldly experiences because one is a believer and not just a believer in speech but in actions and one is just you know uh blinded by the god of this age so they cannot see you know the, the glory of, of god in christ or cannot receive christ as jesus uh, uh, christ as lord and savior so these two individuals even though they may live in the same house in the same neighborhood in the same house and and come out you know from the same family from the same womb potentially these two individuals will have two different lives they may have similar experiences as far as what life throws at them but how they're able to deal with it how they're able to overcome it how they're able how they are able to perceive and to learn and to grow from these experiences will be different and this is simply because one one of the reasons is because of the mind of christ when we have the mind of Christ and not only have it, but actually live it, we are going to see things differently. We are going to perceive things differently. We're going to understand things differently. We're going to, you know, try, um, internalize things differently. Right. And so we have to understand that we have to understand that um, and believe that and know that, you know, especially when you are out in the world, you know, as the spirit of God says, Father, I, I pray that you do not take them out of the world. Right. But, you know, basically, but that you, you know, give them everything that they need, right, to be um, empowered, to be strengthened, um, to be successful and victorious as you have allowed me to be victorious, right? So, I'm going to pull up this scripture. So, the scripture of the Lord praying to God saying, you know, god you know do not take them out of this world right i'm going to pull it up here i'm going to read it this is from john chapter 17 verses 15 and this is jesus praying to the father right he says my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one right and so the evil one you know can take on different names right just like god has multiple names um, the evil one has multiple names and so let me just go to john 17 16 another scripture down Right, it says they are not of the world, even as I'm not of it. I'm gonna keep reading until I feel like I don't need to read anymore. Uh, so we're gonna go to seventeen seventeen now, John seventeen seventeen. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. This is okay. I'm gonna pause there. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. Right. So I talked about us being transformed by the renewing of our minds. Right. This is imperative. This is actually a prerequisite for you to become or manifest the identity that the spirit of God has created for you in Christ Jesus. Right. Because the word says that we are created anew in Christ. Let me pull up Ephesians 2.10 and read that for you as well. I'm going to read it from the AMPC version because the AMPC uh, version gives a lot more details and it has more of a contemporary language that allows us to understand well allows me to understand and and it just it just hits a little differently right so ephesians 2 10 says for we are god's own handiwork his workmanship recreated in christ jesus born and know that we may do those good works which god predestined planned beforehand for us taking paths which which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live 
Now, I want to go back to John 17, 17, right? Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. So the Lord here is talking about the Holy Bible, right? Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. So many of us, when we were baptized by the Holy Spirit, we were given, that was like our first cleansing. I remember when I had my supernatural experience with the Spirit of God and his baptism. How that, you know, how that, you know, uh, um, just gave me just a whole like it was like I was cleansed it was like I could I tried to remember things from my past I tried to remember you know thoughts and and just things and it, and I could not it was like I was literally cleansed I, I just felt so sanctified so holy I remember I used to just tremble I mean just the thought of God you know especially at that time when I was just you know so sold out in reading the word and, and meditating on God's word uh, you know, my, my, you know, the glory of God, the spirit of God would just have me trembling. I mean, I remember my mouth would just, just tremble, tremble heavily. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and I long to have, but you know, to get back to, to, to that day, truly, you know, I long to get back to, to, to those times. I don't ever want to believe that because I don't feel it, that God is not with me because his word says that he will always be with me. But, you know, I just remember, you know, the first, that, that first time when I was reintroduced to my first love, because, you know, a lot of people don't know, but those of us who have who have been chosen, you know, we, you know, we were already with God, right? We were already with the Spirit of God, and God chose us, you know, according to His will, to fulfill His plan. So, so we were temporarily or momentarily, momentarily separated um, by the Spirit of God, just as Jesus was, right? Jesus was momentarily separated by the Spirit of God to fulfill the will of God. So, like us. Like our big brother Jesus, you know, God has, you know, has momentarily, momentarily separated us from him so that we can fulfill the, the, the will of God for, for, for not, for not you know, for, for our lives, but for the lives of, of those whom God has called us to. Right. So John 17, 17 says, I have sanctified them by the truth. Your word is the truth. OK. And so we know also um who, uh, who also is referred to as the truth is Holy Spirit, right? Holy Spirit is referred to as the spirit of truth, right? And of course, Jesus is, Jesus is here saying, you know, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. Now, I want to bring up several scriptures, or should I say a couple scriptures that are going to allude to what John 17, 17 is saying here, right? And so the first one is, of course, John uh, in Joshua, right? where the Lord tells, you know, as Joshua begins to take over the role of Moses, because Moses, you know, had fulfilled and completed his work. The Lord says to Joshua in Joshua 1, I'm just going to put it up real quick. Joshua 1. So the Lord now begins to speak one-on-one um, -on -one with Joshua, right? He begins to now commune with Joshua in a way that maybe Joshua had not experienced before, and rightfully so, because now Joshua had now graduated into the position that um, Moses had held, right? And so um, so I'm going to read Joshua 1 here. I'm going to, and I want you to listen to, you know, the decree of God's word as to his instruction and as to you know, the command, right, that he has been commanded from commanding since day one, right? And also commanded again in Matthew 6, 3, 3, which I'm going to read. And again, Jesus talks about it in John 17, 17, right? So Joshua 1, this is Joshua 1, right? After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, uh, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, Moses' minister, Moses, my servant, is dead. So now arise, take his place, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land which I am giving to them, the Israelites. Every place upon which the sole of your foot shall thread, that have I given to you as I promised Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, all the Euphrates are Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, Canaan, and to the great Mediterranean Sea on the west shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and confident and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only you be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. 
This is now Joshua 1, verses 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Now, that scripture, Joshua 1, 8, is alluding to or prophesying or confirming, affirming, uh, commanding us as our ancestors were commanded and as we were also commanded in the New Testament according to Matthew 6.33, which I'm going to read here, right? Matthew 6.33, which the Lord is also saying here, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well so here is the spirit of god again being unison or being consistent in his decrees and his commands right about his expectations for those whom not only he has chosen but for those whom are choosing to follow him right many people in your life in your life are going to be people whom because of you know how you live because of god's glory in your life because of how you represent the kingdom they are going to want to know more about you you know they're going to be attracted to the glory of god in you and that will be your opportunity and your moment to begin to speak of the kingdom of god and to allow the holy spirit to you know minister through you to save these souls which is ultimately what god wants us to do as disciples apostles and teachers and, and, and servants of the kingdom of god okay and so this book of the law this they're talking about the holy bible right the, the, the true law of liberty shall not depart out of your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it matthew 6 3 says but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well john 17 17 says sanctify them by the truth your word is the truth so these three scriptures and i know that there's more that i can bring up as a frame of reference to again affirm communicate to you guys the importance of god's commands and why he says that we have to hearken unto his voice only then shall we be successful in all that we do because in the word of god in god's truth according to john 17 17 in the book of the law according to joshua 1 8 in the kingdom of righteousness according to matthew 6 3 3 this is the mindset of God. This is the culture of God. These are the ways of God, the thoughts of God that are higher than ours, right? And so in order for us to have perpetual, or should I say, in order for us to have not only access to the kingdom, but to sustain, right, the lifestyle that is provided as only a citizen of the kingdom can have, it is a decision that we need to make to be unapologetically and uncompromisingly faithful in our spiritual walk, right? And so there are these instructions that we need to adhere to, trust in, and rely on to again uh, abide by the principles abide by the covenant abide by the expectations that we can see throughout ancient times as revealed in the word of god even today in contemporary christianity that there are just benefits and fruitfulness when it comes to you being obedient right uh holy spirit just bring brought back to me saul right the reason why saul was not only demoted but basically destroyed right um, was because of his unwillingness to live in obedience, right? Um, the word t basically talk, revealed, you know, how the pride of man and, you know, when people allow, you know, the world and the cares of this world and, and you know, pride and, um, you know, feeling yourself a little too much, as they say, how that can how that will be you know or can be and then will be a detriment to you if you're not heeding to the signs of corrections or the signs of warning that the spirit of god is known to do you know the the, the lord you know who we know to be gracious and merciful is not one who just you know just snap on you out of the blue right there seems to be and always have been a series of warning a, a series of 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 corrections a series of opportunities for you to turn from your wicked ways and do what is right so in the case of saul you know saul was just unwilling to do turn from his wicked uh, wicked ways now yes god chose saul and, and yes you know um saul in the beginning stages of his spiritual walk um was doing everything that he needed to do but somewhere down the line things changed and you know this should be again a revelation as to how 
today, right, in our lives and in our walk with the Lord, how, you know, things of this world can have you, you know, have you uh, begin to know, have things take God's place in your heart, right, which would be idolatry, right, and we know that's a number one no-no thing when it comes to the kingdom of God and, and just the blessing and the covenant of promises manifesting in your life. It is unacceptable and just a no-no um, to have, you know, I idols and, and and the things of this world taking the place of God in your life, especially when you, you know, the spirit has revealed to you, you know, as it did for me, that the things of this world that we once idolized was actually destroying us, right? The, the things of this world that the enemy had used to make it seem so attractive and, and, and pleasant and pleasurable was actually, was actually killing us, right? So, um, so it's kind of like, okay, now that the spread of truth has revealed these things to us, why, why are we going back to the old ways? Why are we going back to the things that the spread of God has, um, revealed was trying to kill us now? That can be answered by the, the fallen nature, right? The fallen nature is just what it is. It's just prone to sin. It loves to sin. But we've overcome the vices. We've overcome the captivity and the bondage that sin is known to put people in. And we've overcame that because of the Spirit of God who rose Christ from the dead. Now, if you have the Holy Spirit living within you and you believe that, you will know that you have power over the enemy when it comes to sin and that there is no temptation that the Spirit of God will allow us to experience that he would not have already made a way for us to escape. Glory to God. So, again, you know, you, it's all about, you know, one of the other reasons, again, that the Spirit of God wants us to meditate on his word is so that we can know who we are, right? One of the main, re, you know, one of the main reasons, if not foundationally, foundationally, how the enemy has power over people is because of them not knowing who they are, right? So a term for that is your identity, right? It, you know, there is an identity for you in Christ, right? But let's talk about the identities, plural, that are out there in this world, right? And so, in other words, there are so many different self-help books and people out there who have their own mindset, philosophies, and ideologies, and, and things that they believe to be, you know, right, maybe for them. But it may not necessarily be right for you, right? And so a lot of the times, especially when it comes to religion, right? There are certain religions, right? Whether you're Buddha, Hindu, and again, this is this is not me trying to, you know, um condemn anyone's religion. I'm just speaking, you know, plainly and truthfully about, you know, the different things that are out there that people subscribe to in this world, right? I don't know, I'm not sure who what is the top um I believe it's the top three religions in the world right now is Judaism, Christianity, and um, I believe Muslim or Islam, right? I believe or Hinduism, right? Top four. And so, and so each one of those religions, you know, they're going to have their own uh, manifestations of fruit. So in other words, they're going to have their own manifestation of a lifestyle or lifestyle, lifestyles that uh, is rooted in those principles is rooted in those scriptures even as someone who's maybe you may be a buddhist right there are principles that you know as a as someone who's a buddhist or sub subscribe to buddha you know there are these principles and expectations that you know you are to follow if you are going to follow you know that religion if you're going to follow that philosophy right and so even in the christian faith right there are uh, so many different denominations in the Christian faith, right? It's like, okay, if you're a Christian and you're a follower of Christ, one Lord, one Spirit, one baptism, one God, then why is there all these different denominations, right? And, and then when you've experienced these different denominations as, as I've had, right? I've had uh, my fair share of uh, denominational Christianity, right? And I've been, you know, uh, I've understood you know, the, re the truth that not everyone, all of them are talking about the same Jesus. In, in, in fact, you know, there are certain Bibles, you know, that, that are variations of the Holy Bible. They're not the original true word of God. Now, that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother uh, sermon slash video slash podcast, whatever. But, you know, I just want to stick here to the importance of, you know, allowing the spirit of truth, Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth. Because, as you know, as the scales have fallen from your eyes, right, as you've now been uh, open or, or given access to certain truths that you weren't privy to before, you got to understand now so many things are going to be vying for your attention, 
so many things are going to be trying to, you know what I'm saying, trying to steal, you know, the original word that you was taught, right? And the word talks about this, right? The word talks about, I believe it was Paul, you know, as he was ministering to one of the churches was like, you know, these people who have stolen from you, you know, what you were, what you were originally taught, you know, you know, curse be them, right? Curse be those individuals who have tainted and perverted God's word because, you know, it's just a horrible sin, right? And so we can avoid that. We can avoid, you know, these wolves in sheep's clothing and this deception or these Decepticons that come on behalf of God's kingdom, quote unquote, but are actually on behalf of the kingdom of darkness. We can overcome and, and be highly discerning of these individuals so that we're never, you know, again, ensnared back into bondage or ensnared back into captivity and all the things, you know what I'm saying, that, um, that you know, tends to happen to people who are not... Um, who are lukewarm and people who, again, are just not knowledgeable or don't have, you know, the level of revelations or, or understanding about the scriptures to navigate right righteously um, in this life. Now, I'm not saying that you're not going to make mistakes and, you know, things are not going to happen where, you know, it's just like you have to learn from your mistakes. Yeah, of course. But I'm talking about just, you know, making decisions because, you are doing what you're supposed to do as a child of God. You are meditating on his word day and night because it's a command that the spirit of God has um, decreed for us. It is something that we are to fulfill um, as, part of his, as part of his covenantal agreement. And guess what? What God is asking us, I mean, it's not even it's not even a demand or it's not even something that should be seen as a yoke or heavy burden. Because at the end of the day, if God is the word, if the word was, was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh, that means that the word that we have in front of us, right, that is Jesus in front of us. I mean, if you hold a Bible in your hand, you can, it's best to say that this is Jesus in your hand, right? This may not be so for another person who don't have the Holy Spirit or another person who was not given revelation of the kingdom of God. But for you, that your perception and your mindset and your view and your value of the Holy Bible should be different because you've now been given keys to the kingdom. You've now been given understanding of a mystery that has been held, you know, a mystery for many and continues to be a mystery for many, uh, for many. But for you, you know, you now have a revelation of the word where now it's like, okay, even how you see it, how you value it, how you care for it, um, should definitely, uh, represent, you know, your knowing, right? Your knowing or your understanding of the value of this word. And so, the Lord is saying, meditate on my word day and night. The Lord is saying this because, you know, yes, it is a command. Yes, it is. It's, it's a, it, you know, it's an expectation. It's part of the covenantal agreement. But at the same time, it's, it's, if you, if you love someone, right, you want to get to know them, right? So if God is the word, if the Lord is the word, if the word was, was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh, and the word dwelt amongst us. And the word is dwelling in your household. It's dwelling in, in your room. First, you have the spiritual word, who is the Holy Spirit. And then you have the tangible word, which is the Holy Bible. If you are not eating the bread of life daily, right? If you're not communing with the Spirit of God in the ways that he has asked you to commune with him. Doesn't that say that there's some type of breakdown in the relationship? Doesn't that communicate that there's some type of, you know, dysfunction? Or, or disconnection in a relationship where you're not lust, you know, I was going to say lusting after, you know, for contextual purposes, when I say lusting, I mean love, right? Loving for or, or desiring with an insatiable desire for the things of God, right? An unquenchable thirst, right? If you if you don't have that for the spirit, you know, for the word, then there's something there in, in your mind and in your spirit that we can overcome and that you can overcome. But it first takes you acknowledging, okay, well, what's the disconnect? Why is it that I'm not as sold out for the Lord as I was in the beginning stages of, of, of my life? And this is for me as well, because I can, I, I can acknowledge and, you know, accept one, you know, my lukewarmness and, and how I allow, you know, just lack of faith and just impatience and just seeking other people before seeking God, how I've allowed that, you know what I'm saying, to delay things in my life and just to have me go through things that I, that I didn't need to go through. But yet still, I cannot not acknowledge, you know, the grace and the mercies of God, right? So what I was saying before about, you know, not, um, what I was saying before about, you know, the importance of faith, right, and living by faith. We don't ever want to make it seem like we're working 
for God's goodness or we're working for God's grace or we're working for the things that God has freely given. Because there's a difference between trying to um, uh, implement self-imposed -impo self uh, ways and habits that you think is going to make you closer to God and then doing things that you are or doing um, things that you will believe will make you closer to God but you're doing it not because you want anything from God, but because you truly love God. You truly love the Lord, right? So these are two different experiences that will warrant two different actions, two different reactions, and thus two different uh, uh, manifestations of fruits, right? And so, so be mindful of your heart. Be mindful of, you know, of what it is you're doing, what you're doing, why it is that you're doing what you're doing. What is, you know, in, what is your intentions, right? Are we following God because we just want him to bless us and make us rich? Or are we following God because even before his plans to make us rich and wealthy, he delivered us from eternal damnation? Even before his desires to make us famous and distinguished, he delivered us from the snares of the enemy. Even before his, uh, uh, his desires to make us a blessing to the nations, he already chose us in Christ. Right. So these are the things where you have to really sift your heart and discern and say, OK, well, why am I doing what I'm doing? You know, why am I in a situation that that, you know, it doesn't feel right, but I'm in it because I feel like God, this is where God would want me to be. And, you know, again, is it is this a place where God would want you to be? Because, you know, he wants you to learn a situation. He wants you to learn. He wants you to develop in, um, patience. He wants you to develop endurance. Or are you in a situation because you just feel like you have to do the thing, the same things the Lord did as far as um, suffering, right? So again, pride and all these different things come in the hearts and minds of people where, you know, you have to understand truly why you're doing what you're doing. And the only way you're going to know that is by consulting Holy Spirit, right? Holy Spirit is the one that you can say, Holy Spirit, you know, make it plain to me here. Like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Is this, is this something that I'm supposed to do? Am I doing it for the wrong reasons? Do I have a misunderstanding as to your call for my life? You know, what is it that I'm doing? Like, what, like, help me out here so that I'm not going around this mountain over and over and over and over again, that I will not go through this wilderness experience as my ancestor did for 40 years, but that I shall recognize the situation, recognize what you're teaching me here, learn from it and move on. Right. And so how we get to do these things and how we become even masters at, you know, the things of God, right? Because I believe it's, it's possible to be a master at whatever it is God has called you to do and to become is by understanding who you are, is by looking into the true law of liberty, is by meditating on God's word day, uh, day and night, is by, you know, maintaining the value of that truth, right? As John 17, 17 first uh, talks about, right? That truth, right? The truth of God as in sanctify them by your truth. Your word is the truth. So the word of God is going to sanctify us. It's going to cleanse our minds, cleanse our hearts, because every day we wake up, we are bombarded by the works of the enemy as far as the media, as far as people's words, as far as just even, you know, the thoughts that the God of this age has, you know, orchestrated to flow through the, the air as, as, as a principality, right? And so, you know, there are these things that we don't necessarily see with our natural eye, but it actually goes on because, again, because that's just what it is. We live in a spiritual dimension, right? And so the grace and the love of God has allowed our natural eyes to see beautiful things. Like right now, I'm at a beautiful park. I'm seeing palm trees. I'm seeing, you know, it's nice manicured lawns. I mean, people are out there relaxing. Somebody's sleeping over there. It's a nice shaded bench and chairs. I mean, I'm sitting on a comfortable chair right now. And so I'm seeing beauty right now. I'm seeing peace. I'm seeing, you know, architecture and aesthetics that is pleasing to my eye. But if, you know, the Spirit of God was to open my spiritual, <laughs> my spiritual eyes, you know, in a sense, to, to see what's really going on in the midst of this quote-unquote beauty, right? It, there would be darkness, right? I remember when I first got saved, you know, when the, when I was first sensitive to the Holy, you know, the Holy Spirit and I, you know, I was sanctified in that moment, glory to God. I would, I remember I was very sensitive to, to, the, to the spiritual realm. I would hear things. My dreams was just on another level. Um, I would smell things, you know, just things that I knew was from the, 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 the spiritual realm, whether demonic or angelic, right? And so, um, and so these are the things that, again, as you go from spiritual milk to spiritual um, meat, you become alive when it comes to the things of God. These things should not be foreign to us, right? Especially if you're a prophet or chosen one of God, right? God is spirit. So 
as a child of God, we are spirit. And so we should not be afraid or, you know, be too much of a foreigner, right? Especially depending on how long we've been walking with the Lord. You know, we shouldn't be too much, you know, we shouldn't be too ignorant, I should say, or lacking such ignorance where we're not able to quickly identify or recognize the things of God or what God is saying or the voice of God. Now, like I said, with any relationship, it takes you having to spend time with a person, intimacy, right? Alone time, right? So are we spending alone times with the Spirit of God? Are we spending alone time with the Word? Are we praying? Are we, you know, crying out to God, you know what I'm saying, when everyone else and everything has continuously failed us? Are we? Or are we calling out to God only when people have failed us and every time things is going good, we forget about Him? I don't know, but that's a question that you have to consider and consult you and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you exactly what you need to know. So I'm going to round it up here uh, for today, beautiful people. Um, you know, everything that you are, everything that 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 was made for you and prepared for you, everything that you know that that God has prepared for you, um, you know, it's for you right it, it it just takes you rising up into your identity it takes you coming up into the level or coming up into the manifestation it takes you receiving right these promises it takes the word you know being embedded in your heart mind and soul right it takes you being transformed by the renewing of your mind okay it takes your intimacy with the lord as you walk and talk with the lord as he gives you prophetic messages as he speaks to you and directs you you know you begin to become more confident more assuring more affirmed you know you begin to again just be this person whom again people are going to have a problem with especially people who know you or thought they know you or if you're living in this world where people are just so accustomed to living in bondage and not able to think for themselves and here you are you know with the spirit of god because whom you know as 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 it is said whom, you know, the Spirit of God sets free is free, right? And when you look into the true law of liberty, right, which is the Holy Bible, and you allow the scriptures to transform your mind, okay, and you begin to see things differently, you begin to act differently, you begin to operate in your identity as was made for you in Christ Jesus, yes, you're going to be a different person. Think about Joseph, think about David, think about these people who were not recognizable, right so let's stick on joseph joseph was not recognizable let's talk about jesus right jesus had a transfiguration moment that only three people were able to see right these were three people that god chose um to walk with him on an intimate level more than the others right so as they say he had his multiple tools he had his 12 and he had his threes right and so the three was just it was symbolic or representative of those who walk closely with god these are the privileges or the advantages that you get. You get access to the kingdom on a whole nother level. And it's the same today. Okay. Though God is no respect of persons. You know, you, you know, God didn't consult with your family. He didn't consult with the nations about your salvation, about his purpose over your life. Okay. He created your salvation. He created your purpose. He created your identity. And so the only person that you should be consulting with, the only person that you should be studying with, and, and communing with when it comes to your identity is the spirit of God. Okay. It's not going to come from anywhere else. It is not going to come from religion. It's not going to come from denominations. It's not going to come from your mother and father. It's not going to come from people that you love. It's going to come from the spirit of God who redeemed you from the curse, who bought you for a price. Okay. Who died. Okay. So that you can have life and life more abundantly so that you can be raised to life and that you can have your own personal transfiguration and whatever it is that God has called you to do in life at the appointed time so that you can reign as a king in life through the one man jesus christ the messiah so that you can have the authority and the dominion that our ancestors had at one point before it was stolen okay restored to life redeemed okay by the last adam all right beautiful people so with that being said you know um your identity is everything you know this is a theme that the spirit of god has just been you know pushing on my spirit even more so to talk about i've been orchestrating you know and, and creating new ways to communicate this message as you can see per your listening right now if you know how i you know when i first started this journey you know what i'm saying it, it was different right but you can also see the growth and you can also see again the branches that that has been weaned right the word talks about you know god weaning you know or or, or the fruitful vines you know he wings them right he cleans out you know he cleans up and he, he 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 empowers you to even be more fruitful right he gives you one talent and then you go and you bring back two 
and he gives you five and you go and you bring back 10 and he gives you 20, right? And so that's how God works, right? But it has us having to value the little that he's given us, right? It has to have us, you know, He it is required for us, excuse me, okay, to value the little things that he's given us, to, to value the little ministry that he's given us as unconventional or traditional as it may be to value it, to value the one person that he's asking you to minister to, to coach, to empower, to strengthen. You never know that person could be your, 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 your roommate or, or your significant other, the person, you know, that you're looking at right now at the, at the job, at the workplace, or wherever you are. And you're like, mm -hmm. you know, it's God telling me this is my wife. It's God, you know, it's God telling you this is your husband. But, you know, because you're looking on the outside and you can't see the spirit of a man or you can't see what God can see in the future, you know, you're, you're, you're downplaying this person. And God may be saying to you, you know, show love to this person. Be a friend to this person. It, it may not even be a relationship thing. It just may be you having to serve, right? Serve. That's what we're here to do. Serve. Okay. And serve in whichever capacity, in whichever way the spirit of God has asked you to serve. All right, beautiful people. So just be open, right? Just be open and be reminded of God's goodness. Understand that, you know, God gives us a peace that surpasses understanding. Understand that God loves us. Understand that the enemy is trying to kill, steal, and destroy. One of the ways he does that is by stealing your joy because he understands when the joy of the Lord is your strength, you do exploits that, you know, you would not be able to do, you know, in your period, okay? When you have the joy of the Lord and you're just in a state of joy and delight, I mean, you're able to create, you're able to just do things that you're not able to do if you're feeling oppressed or if you're feeling emotionally depressed or down, right? It's just certain things that you can't do. And so this is another opportunity the Spirit of God is presenting to us when he says meditate on my word. Because when we're meditating on God's word, when we become tunnel visioned, you know, in the things of God, when we seek ye first the kingdom of God in a tunnel visioned way, we block out all the things of the enemy. We, you know, it's not to say the enemy won't try, you know what I'm saying, to, to encroach upon our freedom. But when we in our hearts make a decision to be unapologetic and uncompromising about pursuing the kingdom of God with tunnel vision, best believe, best believe God will show out in your life. Best believe that you are saying, I love God wholeheartedly with my whole mind, body, soul, spirit, which the Lord says that we are to do. Best believe when you are doing that, that it's going to show. Best believe that the angels that are ready and standing by on set on your mark, right, is, is ready to be deployed, ready to act on behalf of you because you are what? Hearkening onto the voice of God. Because you are what? Being obedient to his commands. Because you are what? Expressing your love not just in words but in actions, okay? It is your actions. It's not just in words. The Lord says, for those who love me will do what I say. And it's one thing to do, it's one thing to do what God says that's truth. And it's one thing to do what the Lord says that's, quote, you know, that, that's, that's a lie, right? Quote, unquote. Let me rephrase that. It's one thing to do what God says that's the truth, right? That comes from the word of God that is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And then, the, and then there are, quote, unquote, truths out there, as I was talking about with denominations, where people are saying that this is the word of the Lord. Or you have even prophets who are decreeing and declaring the word of God and God never said anything. They have not consulted with the Spirit of God. They have not walked with the Lord. They have not communed with the Spirit of God to understand exactly what is on the heart of God. So what and where are they speaking from, right? They're speaking from their own idolatrous minds. They're speaking from their own selfish ambition. They're speaking from their own self-will, okay? And if you don't have the discerning spirit in you to discern, okay, is this a wolf in sheep's clothing? Or is this someone who is a man or woman of God, who God has conditioned and commissioned for the glory of the kingdom and is speaking into me? then you're just going to be, again, like the blind leading the blind, right? And and just go wherever the, the enemy is leading you to go so that you don't live in the freedom that God has prepared, so that you don't live and receive the promises of God, okay? So your identity, beautiful people, as you're coming into manifestation of your identity, you know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be shaking. It's going to be emotional. It can be emotionally draining. It's going to be a lot of things. But stay faithful, stay true. Just believe that the God who delivered you the first time when you didn't even know you needed deliverance is going to deliver you again, right? That he's going to see you through, right? He will not. I want to go back to Joshua 1 and I'm going to close out. He says, you know, uh, Moses, my servant is dead now, is dead. So now arise, take his place, go over this Jordan, you and all this people into the land which I am giving to them, the Israelites. Every place upon which the sole of your foot shall tread, that's how I give it to you as I promised Moses, okay? From the wilderness and this Lebanon to the great 
river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, Canaan, and to the great Mediterranean Sea on the west shall be yours, right? Your territory. No man, okay, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong, confident, and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only you be strong and very courageous, that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. So this whole thing, this whole chapter from Joshua 1, uh, Joshua 1 verse 1 to verse 8 is basically your identity. It's part of your identity. It's the foundational expectation as a follower of God, as a child of God, that you are to trust in, rely on, and adhere to in order to manifest the promises of God in your life, right? So foundationally, right, this would be your cornerstone, quote unquote. This is the, 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 the foundation or the plan that, that has been laid out, okay, for you to start building your house upon, okay? You know, somebody was saying to me, <coughs> I, no, I think I was saying to somebody, I was like, you know, it doesn't matter who a person is, you know, when Christ has come into their life. They can be broke, busted, and disgusted. They can be dumber than dumb and dumber. They can be, I mean, just the most horrible person. But once the Spirit of God has come into that individual, okay, that is a changed person, okay? And so right from that point on, it's about building your life on that cornerstone, right? It's about building your new house, your new temple, okay, on this truth. From there, nothing can stop you, okay? It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what culture and society that's ever changing and ever shifting and ever transforming to whatever it wants to do, right? When you're rooted in the Spirit of God, you are consistently, you are perpetually rooted you are eternally rooted, okay? Y your source is eternal. Your identity becomes eternal. You are immovable, unshakable, uncursable, unstoppable, ever blessed, ever at rest amongst your enemies. You understand what I'm saying? There's nothing, I don't care what who, what they look like. I don't care ec economic background, educational background, racial background, fat skinny ugly it doesn't matter who this person shows up in your life as okay trying to keep you down and break you down okay because what our weapons uh, of our warfare is not with what flesh and blood okay our enemies are not flesh and blood but spiritual principalities in the heavenly realms working against the kingdom of god so knowing who you are truly according to god's truth is going to empower you to respond to situations that you may want to respond emotionally or carnally right or fleshly but it's like it's not going to produce the righteousness, glory to God, that God has prescribed for us to produce in Christ Jesus, okay? The world wants you to get physical and emotional and, and respond in these low-level ways, but it doesn't produce the righteousness that pleases God. The righteousness that pleases God um, that, that, that we have access to and will know what to do, right, when that time comes is in Christ, it's your identity in Christ. It's the new creature in Christ. I'm going to read Ephesians 2.10 and close out for, for the last. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated. I want you to hear this. Recreated. Another version says, made anew. Recreated in Christ Jesus. Born anew. Right? Born anew. You are a new person. Physically on the outside, you may still look the same, but... Think about that transfiguration, right? Think about even the new body that Jesus took when he was risen from the dead, right? There's a newness, a transformation that comes about from the inside out, okay? Think about Joseph. He was not recognizable by his family, all right? There was a transformation that eventually came about that ultimately made him in unrecognizable by his loved ones, okay? So born anew that we may do those good works which God predestined, uh, that God pre which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which He prepared ahead of time. Taking paths. This is this is again revelatory of the new life, the new industry, the new career, 
the new path. You may have been someone who may have been living, you know, a lifestyle of perversion and corruption. You may have been someone who never thought to be married. You may have been someone who never thought to have children. You've never, you may have been someone who never been had a desire to be an entrepreneur or go to law school or to do anything because you didn't feel like you were smart enough. But in Christ Jesus, glory to God and amen taking paths which he has prepared ahead of time for us that we should walk in them, living the good life. So in these paths that the Spirit of God has prepared for us to walk in, there is the good life, okay? The good life, as the Word of God describes, as spacious and free and abundant, okay? Which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So as I said before in the video, even before we were chosen, even before the time of our healing has come, even before the time of restoration for us has come, before that, God prearranged, right? He prearranged even before the fall of the fallen world. There was a prearrangement, okay? God, who is omnipotent and omniscient, all knowing, beginning and end, saw ahead of time and picked us out for the glory of Him. Picked us out, okay? For the glory of Him, okay? Picked us out. One last time for the glory of him. So when you now come into the revelation as to you being God's masterpiece, his peculiar nation, his royal priesthood, his beloved, his chosen, his child, you got to understand that the adversary, the opposer, the liar, the one who tried to destroy God's creation, you now who are no longer under his, his, his chains, you who are no longer under his, his kingdom, right? You who are no longer under the things, again, that he had used to control your life, you got to understand that you, in, in turn, has become the, re the, the rebellion or the rebellious one against him. And he doesn't like that, right? The kingdom of darkness doesn't like rebellion. They don't like people who, you know, go against each other, you know? And this is what the word, again, talks about, you know, a house divided cannot stand, Right? And, and so the enemy knows that. And so that's why he uses division and strife and all these different things within the body of Christ to divide God's people. But you, again, as an individual, as one whom God did not, you know, consult any person to save, you got to know who you are. You got to know your authority. You got to know the dominion and the power that the Spirit of God has given you so that you are rising above the ashes. You are rising above you know, the, the, you're treading upon, as the word says, serpents and scorpions, okay? You are succeedingly or successively defeating the works of the enemy because you are not allowing what your natural eyes see or you are not going against the word of God that says our, our, our fight is not with flesh and blood. So I don't care if it's your mother and your father and your sister and your brother who have tried to keep you down, who have betrayed you, who have done some wicked things to you. Understand it's the evil spirits within these individuals that have been trying to control and oppress you that the spirit of God has says you are now free. You are free. Rejoice in your freedom. Rejoice in you know in you being free from emotional, spiritual, mental captivity. Rejoice because the Lord thy God has chosen you and has not only chosen you but will now use you for his glory. Where you're now going to have to help these same people who didn't think much of you. These same people who thought that you wouldn't make it. These same people who plotted and schemed against you. These same people who probably tried to take your life with witchcraft and sorcery and these different things. Okay? These same people who maybe tried to set you up. These are the same people as they try to kill Joseph. These are the same people that you're going to have to bless. This is, these are the same people that who are going to have to glory to God. Bow down. Because you are the chosen one of God. Okay, beautiful people. So be reminded of that. Know who you are. Be reminded of God's goodness. Be reminded of his truth for your life. Be reminded, okay, of the promises of God being yes and amen. Walk in the fullness of that identity. Don't let the enemy come and encroach upon your freedom and make you think that you are not who you who God says you are, trying to make you believe that you are something that you're not. You know, be done with the people, places, and things that have lied to you and told you that told you that you are something that you're not. Okay? And walk into press forward rush into become unapologetic and uncompromising okay about bring into fruition the identity that the spirit of god has said you are to be in christ jesus with that being said beautiful people thank you so much for watching if you have not checked out my last episode okay i have it's the coronel gilliam's podcast on spotify the last episode that i did is called identity issues as per you know you i've been doing these these uh podcasts and these videos and these audios focusing on identity i feel i feel like that's my calling in this season i don't know how long but i feel like that's the theme that's the focus that's the area 
um, that the Spirit of God wants me to help when it comes to coaching, when it comes to developing the self-esteem, and when it comes to, again, setting free, according to Isaiah 61, setting the captives free, emotional, spiritual, even physical. I actually had someone reach out to me on Facebook who's actually incarcerated and talked about how my message has been, my messages have been so empowering to him. Okay, and so yes, it's one thing to be incarcerated or enslaved physically, right? But emotionally and mentally and spiritually, I feel like you can be in bond in, in, in a jail cell physically, but your mind could be free, right? But ultimately, we want ultimate freedom. We want freedom in every area of our lives when it comes to relationship, when it comes to our emotions, when it comes to physical, when it comes to financial. We want freedom in every area of our lives that the true law of liberty has made available available for us to be set free in and i decree and declare that over you in the mighty name of jesus okay so check out my podcast on spotify it's called the corwin l gilliams podcast the last episode i did is called identity issues you can follow me on facebook at clg lifestyle that is www.facebook forward slash clg lifestyle.com you can also check me out at www.clg lifestyle.com i'm also on youtube I don't have a specified link yet. I have not reached the criteria to have one. But when I do, I will also share that. But you can also uh, just locate the link in the description box of this video, wherever you're going to listen to it. Um, you'll be able to link directly to all my other platforms. All right, beautiful people. Thank you so much for listening. Corwin L. Gilliam signing out. Talk to you guys soon. Be blessed.